Hello there. In this video, I want to give you an overview of how contributing to Phantomus looks like in 2023. We recently merged something that we called Project Dallas that um, changes a lot of the internals of Phantomus. And today I just want to give you a brief overview of how it um, is all structured these days. This video is unscripted, so I might be missing a couple of things along the way here. And first off, I wanted to point out that we have a pretty decent documentation website. There's a section for contributors and that really gives you everything you need to know on how to get started, how the main engine uh, works and how you can contribute uh, and even an extended guide on what to do when a code comment is missing because that typically is one of the more common problems inside of Phantomus. So definitely check that out. Otherwise, I want to give you a brief uh, introduction in you know the latest and greatest and let's just kick off with uh, cloning the solution so i already did this of course and the first thing we actually want to do if we look at the file system is that we have a depth folder and these the, the steps folder is for, for the dependencies and it contains a hash and what is this hash well this is actually the f -sharp compiler so we Phantomus has always taken a dependency on the f -sharp compiler and instead of using the version from NuGet, we use the version based off a uh, git commit. So what we do is we download the files that we need to and we'll create the compiler from source. But in our case, the compiler will only expose a single parse function. So looking at our directory build props, you can see there's a property fcs commit hash, which corresponds to an actual commit on the .NET F -sharp repository. And we have a uh, build script that will um, contains a uh, fun build. And this one has a couple of pipelines. One of the pipelines would be the init. And the init is something you need to run um, one time initially. And this will download all the various files from the compiler that we need based on um, you know, that commit hash. So in short, when I run this um, with f -sharp Interactive and then pass in this init pipeline, in this case, it already downloaded all the files, but then everything here goes into this depths folder. This is the hash that we talked about. And these are all the files that we'll need for our own um, f -sharp compiler. So this f -sharp compiler is in Phantomus FCS. This um, grabbed all the compiler files that we need and we expose our own little API. So we only actually are interested in the parser and not everything that the compiler can do. And so we have this parse uh, file function that takes a, a signature, yes or no, some source text and defines and gives you AST. This AST if, um, should look familiar if, if you ever encounter it. It is the exact same syntax tree as in the F-sharp compiler. So when we take a look, we can see that it does share the exact same namespace, but we expose it from a different assembly. Um, one of the reasons we do this is that we can you know, choose a commit of our liking that typically has some sort of a parser improvement and we don't necessarily need to wait till it's been released on NuGet because those releases are a bit unpredictable and what we, you know, being able to, to freely move ahead of the official releases is quite beneficial because one change in the F-sharp, um, you know, syntax tree could mean a lot for, for Phantomus. So basically, this is a bit of a auxiliary helper uh, project and it's being used by Phantomus Core. Phantomus Core is sort of the library of the formatting engine and then Phantomus would be our command line tool. We also have a project for benchmarks. Phantomus Client is being used to interact with uh, different editors. So an editor can then reference uh, Phantomus clients and then sort of format using a version that a user specified. But for today, we're mostly going to take a look at Phantomus Core. And in Phantomus Core, we're going to jump to the uh, public API listed in Code for Matter. So this is sort of the official library API you can use. And it's a good enough entry point for this video today. What we're interested in is format documents. So let's just take an entire string of uh, text and then format it. 
we can jump to format document we can see this uh, the implementation of code formatter is mostly um, you know a combination of uh, a file called code formatter implementation so there's code formatter public api which then effectively does everything in the implementation file over here um, in this format document function you'll notice that the first thing we do is we're going to grab the AST with that um, parser we just talked about. So for right over here, we'll grab AST. Now, if you've never seen AST up close, that this can be a very uh, foreign concept. And for that use case, we've created something called the online tool. And this is an application in browsers. Basically, it's just a website. Uh, where we can take a look at how does AST look like. So this AST is a tree model that represents everything you typed on the left side. And this is something that the F-Sharp compiler uses and exposes. Now the thing is, and one of the uh, points I want to focus on today is that the AST that you get from the F-Sharp uh, parser is very tailored towards the F-Sharp compiler. And in our use case, it contains a bit you know too much data to really reproduce um, code again because when we skip to the last tab over here this is a formatted result uh, for example if I add some spaces that's what you know phantomus will have detected that and remove those spaces etc so when we take a look at this let binding it you know has quite some lines of AST and that's what we've been doing in something called project Dallas is that we wanted to create a, a different AST, a different syntax tree that's more tailored towards the use case of Phantomus. And we call this thing an oak. So what we first do is we get um, the parse result of the, of the file with the F-sharp you know, compiler or our own flavor of it. And then we transform that thing to what we call an oak. And you can see that an oak is more lightweight and an oak will more represent purely what was, you know, actually in the syntax tree. It does not do any optimizations, which the F-sharp compiler already does for, you know, the, the type checking later on. Um, we can see we have a top level oak, we have an anonymous modular namespace, there's a single binding node, then there's a multiple text node, which contains the let keyword. If it were recursive, for example, then the uh, rec keyword gets in there. So that's why you can have multiple words. There's an ident list node. So potentially this um, binding was used in a member and then we have something like uh, x dot member name. So that's why this also could be a list. Then there's an equal sign and there's a constant. So the first thing we do is we grab this tree, convert it to our own tree, and then sort of process this tree until we get formatted code. That's the real bulk of it, but um, there's a bit more to it, of course. Um, you might be wondering, so why use this oak tree? I mean, it's more convenient and it's more lightweight, uh, but there's also another problem that's being solved here. When you have something called a, a sort of like a code comment, we will have a indication of that comment inside of the original ASD, so the F-sharp compiler. So it says there's a line comment on line one, column 16, um, but that's, that's kind of all it says. So this is really just inside this file, there's somewhere a line comment. And because this object model um, cannot be extended, and we cannot you know, point the line comments to the exact node. So in this case, we want to point it to the character B, but we cannot do that in this model. That's why we created our own model where we can do stuff like that. So over here, the line, the block in green, is being, you know, is a uh, something that we call a trivia. So trivia is like something that's in the source code, but not necessarily in the tree. And this trivia will then be assigned to a node uh, called B. Um, every line you see here implements a certain interface and this interface allows for the colored line to be sort of inserted in that. We'll get to that in the code, but that's really one of the main gimmicks that we're able to first, you know, transform this AST to an oak and then in a second phase we'll find all the trivia that we need to address to and sort of insert it into the oak. 
So first up, we'll parse the AST. Um, this might seem a bit confusing that parse could return us multiple ASTs. This actually occurs when we are having a hash defines. So if you have something like a hash debug, and then depending on whether debug is active or not, you'll have sort of different code. And that's why we, we have an array in this case. So let's not you know get lost in that detail today, but that's why there could potentially be an array. So in our case, the simple parse results will return a single item, and then we're gonna sort of format that AST. The first thing that we do is we we'll want to transform this AST into an oak. We'll use the AST transformer module for that. This make oak um, will just you know take the top level uh, thing and just really traverse the tree until we we have our uh, converted it to our oak model. So we won't really go into detail here, but one of the nice things is we just really you know, distill all the information and capture it into a sort of an object model that, that is of our interest and not necessarily the one that you get from your sharp compiler. So once we, we sort of have this oak, and depending on whether the source text is available, in the default fashion it typically is, um, inside this oak we can enrich it and this enrichment and then the trivia model is basically give me all uh, the comments, give me all the directives, give me all the new lines. Those are all things that we call trivia and then we sort of try to insert all the trivia on the, in the right node in the tree. So we already said that we needed an oak and this oak then takes like top level modular namespaces and this is then an, an object itself. And all these things are inheriting node base or at least most of them are. A node base is, um, you know, implements our interface inode, and that's really where, where everything sort of stands for. In our custom oak model, everything is a node, and everything that is a node can sort of add trivia before and after. So to take a step back in our uh, online tool here, all these nodes are different, and you know, don't share any interface or, or whatsoever. Uh, in our oak model, everything is a node here, and these are all just, it's simpler to reason about with sort of parent-child relations, because every um, oak, well, every node um, over here has a property children, and you know, you don't really care um, at some point what kind of nodes the children are, but because you know they are nodes, they uh, have a range and then they potentially can have content before and after. And that content is then another trivia node and those are just very specific things that we know existed in the original source code, but we sort of need to puzzle back together in the tree model. And that's really uh, the most significant thing about um, Project Dallas is that we now have this own model, have this own oak thing. And once we have enriched this oak, we can uh, over here, once we have enriched this, we can pass the entire uh, rich oak node to the code printer. And code printer will um, compose a one single formatting function, more or less. It will take a context and then return the context and inside that function it will populate something we call writer events. So think a bit because it's as if you were to type a letter. Instead of you know just typing it directly and then you know the ink getting dry as, as you type a, a word, we first sort of bundle all the instructions. We um, you know we keep everything, keep track of everything that needs to be on the paper. And then before we actually put the ink on, on the sheet, we sort of are able to tell whether that's gonna fit on the paper or not. And that's what we do with something called events. So we capture all the events that we need to process and then we're gonna dump the events in, you know, actually printing it to uh, the file. Now in, um, code printer in this gen file, we take our top level oak and then we process all the child nodes and 
um, you know, because of our tree model, we are very aware of what kind of nodes we're, we're dealing with. Um, I won't really go overly into this, um, into this code printer, but there's two things I do want to mention. Because of our own uh, model, you can have a very good idea what kind of information is there. So for debuggability, we hope that it really helps new uh, contributors. And we also have something called a code formatter uh, helper functions. This is a unit test file which really explains what we do in um, code printer. Because I mentioned code printer works with events and these events are stored in this context. So if we take a look at context, it has a writer model and a queue of writer events. Queue is a custom data type, um, which is you know collection. And a writer event can be, hey, write a piece of string or write a new line or start indentation, an indent, etc. So there are a couple of things which you kind of want to know and there are helper um, custom operators we use in this code printer file to sort of you know deal with this event model. And the code printer helper functions really sort of helps you grasp all the things we do there. So this file really helps explain what our custom operators do and um, how you want to reason about them. Let's just go and take a look at the first example. So this function f is basically something that would occur in gen file. And as all these things, it takes a context and it returns a context. And then in this custom operator will actually add one new event um, to our context. So we'll take the default context, we'll search that there's nothing in there. When we call our function f with our context to our default, then afterwards we'll sort of assert that there's one writer event being added. Uh, we can easily um, grab these writer events, turn the sequence into a list, and then sort of see what, what happens. So we just put a little breakpoint over here, and now we're going to um, just debug this a little bit, but all I'm basically trying to explain is that this um, exclamation mark dash is our operator to add a certain type of event, and that's basically just the right event. And we'll be able to tell in our context after that the writer events over here, this Q, has one right event which was you know introduced because of this operator. So if you take a look at this operator, it creates a writer event of the discriminated union type. And this writer event uh, could potentially, one event could potentially be split up into more events. But, you know, this is just a very simple explanation. Every time there's a string, we just want to create a write event and add it to the context. That's how we, how we do it. And you can see afterwards exactly our assertion was that there is now one event and our single event was as expected, the, the right event. I really recommend you to sort of check out this file to really have a grasp of what code printer does. Um, we specifically wanted to explain this concept in code because, you know, to make sure that all these concepts are still up to date and um, that you really get a sense of what we are doing. But I, I do think that it's more easy to sort of wrap your head around uh, these days and I really hope that it helps you in um, you know your contribution and this pretty much wraps up what I try to um, you know what I try to explain in this video the most recent changes are our custom F sharp compiler which we you know grab from source then the uh, transformation of the actual syntax tree to our custom syntax tree, which is happening in this oak function, why we need this oak to later add the trivia inside it, and then point out that we um, process our custom tree inside a code printer, and we have some new documentation on you know getting able to figure out all the custom operators we use in uh, gen file in our code printer. I hope this was helpful and yeah, let me know if there's something is still unclear. We have a Discord channel which you can join us and yeah, find us around there, ask some questions and I'll be looking forward to your contributions. Cheers!